Okay, so I gave you a graph. It does look different from anything else we've graphed because it has pi on it. But is pi on x and y axis? No, just the x axis. Um, <clears throat> what's the scale on the y axis? One half. Okay, so these go by one halves. What's the scale on here? Hmm. What's the scale? What's pi over 2 in degrees? 90. Let's put a little 90 above that just to remind us. Now what's the scale? 30 degrees, right? 30, 60, 90. I think you said that, didn't you? In both directions. Okay, so look on your unit circle. How much is 30 degrees in radians? So really the scale is pi over 6, okay? Because that's in radians. But I'm going to go ahead and put 30 here, 60 here. Let's just go to 180. This would be 120. 150, 180. So that'll just be our reminder of what the scale is. Um, where are the 45s? Yeah, they're, they're skipped over. They would technically be in the middle of each of those sets of 180. Um, so in a minute when we get some order pairs, we're going to skip over the 45s just because they don't have a little line on the graph. Okay? So scale on the y-axis is a half. Scale on the x-axis is pi over 6 or 30 degrees. Okay, so what we're going to graph is this. y equals sine theta. Now, I could call it sine x also. Theta is just standing in for the angle. I can use x or y to stand in for the angle as well. Um, so my x-axis is what theta is, and my y-axis is just a number representing the sine of that angle. Okay, so we're going to set up a table of values. I'm going to, just so you don't run out of room, I'm going to take this half over here and set up two tables. So I'm going to have a table of values here. And another one here. And then once we generate the table of values, we're going to plot those order pairs just like you would any time you had a table. And plot those order pairs and see what this crazy graph looks like. Does anybody have an idea of what it would look like? Circle? Okay. All right. We'll see you in a minute. Um, let's start with unit circles. What I'm going to do is go around starting at 0 degrees, and I'm going to go by increments of 30 because that's how the y-axis was scaled, and I'm going to get the sine of each angle. Okay, if I'm looking at my unit circle, how do I find the sine of an angle? The y-coordinate. Remember, the x-coordinate is the cosine of the angle, and the y-coordinate is the sine. So if I want sine of 0 degrees, it's 0. If I want sine of 30, it's one half. Mm -hmm. There we go. Was that my thing? All right, are we good, Maddie? Okay. All right, so we're going to go around starting at 0, 30, 60, 90, 120, I'm skipping the 45s because they're not marked on my x-axis, 150, 180. And then just for good measure, let's also put the radians, which is 0, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, and pi. Okay, so I'm going to go around the top half of the unit circle 
just picking off one by one each of those y coordinates because that's where I find the sine value. Okay, so the first one is zero. The next one is one half. I'm going to use a decimal. I'm just going to say 0.5. Okay, 60 is square root of 3 over 2. What is that? Like I've got to plot that. How much is that? I don't really know, so how can I find out? Let's get a decimal approximation. Square root of 3 divided by 2 is 0.866. Now, this is a tiny graph. What should I call that? I would do 0.9. I mean, this, these are little squares. We're going to have to approximate it. I'm going to just say 0.9. Okay, then I'm going to go up to 90. The sign there is 1. And then I'm going over to 120. Oh, sign there is square root of 3 over 2. I know that number. What is its decimal? 0.9. We just did that. 150. Sign is one half, so back to 0.5, and then 180, sine is zero. Okay. All right, Look, over here in the second column, I'm going to go around the bottom half of the unit circle. So I'm just going to keep going in the same fashion. So the next angle is 210, and then 240. We can go ahead and do the radians while we're there. 7 pi over 6, 4 pi over 3. Um, next puts me at 270, which is 3 pi over 2. And then I'm at 300. 5 pi over 3. 330. 11 pi over 6, and 360, 2 pi. <clears throat> and do the same thing. So at 210, I want to know what sine is. So I'm looking at the y coordinate. Well, it's 1 half again, but now it's negative. So negative 0.5. 240, the y coordinate is negative square root of 3 over 2. So as a decimal, that would be negative 0.9. 270, sine is negative 1. 300, back to that negative 0.9 again. 330, negative 0.5. And then back to 360, sine is 0. What if I kept going around? Like, what if I went to um, 390? Then that just becomes coterminal with 30, right? So I could keep going around and get bigger angles, but I'm just repeating the values that I already had. Okay, so our next step is to plot these ordered pairs. Yes, ma'am. For this one? Okay, so I went to 240 which is right here, and remember sine is the y-coordinate, so I have negative square root of 3 over 2, and I already know that square root of 3 over 2 is 0.9, so I just made it negative 0.9. And same for 5 pi over 3, it's the same number there. Any other questions before we start plotting? Okay, so we're going to plot these ordered pairs. Now they differ from normal ordered pairs, but the process will be the same. So the first one is 0, 0. I know where that is, the origin. The next one is 30 degrees, 0.5. Remember, each line is an increment of 30. And the y-axis scale is a half. So you're going up to the first line. <clears throat> then 60.9. I mean, you know, we're just going to approximate where 0.9 is. Do the best you can. And then 90 degrees goes up to 1. Okay, 120, come back down to 0.9. 150, come back down to 1 half. And 180 puts us back at 0. Okay, stop there for a second. What does that look like? 
Looks like maybe a half circle or a what? Parabola? Doesn't it kind of look like the top part of an upside down parabola? Okay, let's keep going and see what we get. All right, so I'm moving to the next column of ordered pairs. 210, I'm going down to negative 0.5. And then negative 0.9. And then negative 1. And then I'm bouncing back up to negative 0.9 and negative 0.5 and back to 0. Now what does it look like? A what? A snake? What did someone else say? Doesn't look like anything we've ever graphed, does it? Okay, so I'm not going to make another table up there, but remember this is 360, and this would be um, 450, and then that would be 540 over here. So if I wanted to get these angles way out here, I would just keep going around the circle, wouldn't I? Like I went around once, but now I'm going to keep going. So what's going to happen to my y values? What will I find? The same things. So what I'm going to do is repeat this pattern. Now, let's talk about negative. If I go and talk about negative angles, I'm just rotating a different direction. So let's say I start at zero and I'm interested in negative angles. Well, then I'm going clockwise. So I get to the negatives first and then the positives once I get back up to the top half of the unit circle. So on this side of the origin, am I going to bounce back up or bounce down? Yeah, it's going to hit those negative y coordinates first. So we're going to extend this pattern all the way out to the edges. So you're going to keep the same pattern. I mean, you can keep looking at your unit circle if you want to, or just keep repeating the pattern all the way out to the edge. So the pattern is 0, 1 half, 0.91, 0.9, 1 half, 0. So you sneak up to 1, come back down to 0, and then you do the negative of it. So repeat it all the way to the edge. Check up here, make sure that the left side looks like 9, and then take a pen or a marker or just your pencil and make a smooth connection. Now, it's not a bunch of little choppy segments. It's a nice, smooth curve. So just connect them, and let's see how pretty they look. There we go. What shall we call this? I like the term wave because it is like a wave, right? Um, it, it's actually not called that, although there are wave-like things that are modeled with these for obvious reasons. 
Um, so like tide charts would follow this kind of pattern. Um, but it's actually called, like the technical name of it is sinusoid. Ooh. Nice new word to learn. Right there. Sinusoid. So now you have graphed a sinusoid. All right, so anything that kind of fits this pattern is said to be sinusoidal. That would be the adjective that we would use for something that follows this pattern. Sinusoidal. And I actually want you to start looking around because you will see some sinusoidal things. There is a heating and air company around locally. I see their trucks or vans in Carrollton a lot. Um, they're white, but they have a red sinusoid painted with their logo. Like just straight up a sinusoid. Maybe because it's air, like airflow or something is, is kind of wavy. Um, so I see that periodically in Carrollton. If you had a wooden pencil and you sharpened it perfectly in a pencil sharpener, the edge of it would be a little sinusoid. Can you picture what I mean? I have a poster. Let me see if I can stop it. So for the people who are listening to all this on video, there's our sinusoid from a sharpened pencil. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That one's a little off, but like I said, if if you could sharpen it perfectly, the yellow one's pretty good. Ooh, this one's pretty good out here. Um, then it would be a sinusoid. Okay. All right. Let me find her two batteries. Here you go. Yeah, just close that up. Okay, so here's our beautiful sinusoid. Um, also, another place that I've seen these is on a um, Honda dealership. On Honda dealerships, their sign under the word Honda is a little blue sinusoid. So look around. You will actually see some. If you see one, you need to take a picture of Marina in for us. Um, sometimes like awnings. No. <laughs> Um, awnings above windows or doorways, or you'll see sometimes see a little sinusoid wave. So look around; they're out there. Okay, so let me bring up another subject, which in recent years no one ever knows what this means, and it makes me really sad because of the, everything being digital now. If I went to a big library, let's say I went to the City of Atlanta Library could probably go inside and find a section for periodicals. Does anyone know what I would find there? We used, our library used to have periodical section until you're, hmm? Mm, maybe, but not necessarily. Newspapers. No, not the, uh, not the card catalog. Is that what you're thinking of? No, but newspapers is right. Not necessarily. No. Okay, newspapers is correct. What's in periodicals? Magazines, newspapers, 
journals. Okay, so yes, exactly. So the periodical section in the library is where you would find things that were periodically published on a regular schedule. So like maybe a daily newspaper, maybe a monthly magazine, maybe a medical journal that's published twice a year, things like that. That's what periodicals are. So, but now it's all digital, or most of it is. But things that are published or printed on a regular basis. Okay, this graph is periodic. What could I mean by that? It repeats, yes. Okay, so imagine that you're going to walk on this curve from left to right. Pick any point, the origin or, or anywhere else. And you're going left to right, and you're going to be walking up hills and down hills, and up hills and down hills, and up hills, and like it's going to repeat, right? You're going to get deja vu, and you're going to think, wait a minute, I've already done this before because it is a periodic graph. Okay, so my question is this. Pick any point to start walking. When does it start to repeat? How far have you gone before it starts to repeat? 360 degrees or how many radians? Two pi radians. Okay, so the easiest place to see this is if we start at the origin. Then we go uphill, we come downhill, hit that crest, and come back uphill and start the whole thing over again. So that span right there is what keeps repeating. So actually I would call that one full wave. Okay, that whole uphill, downhill, one full wave. All right, so this graph is periodic, and we say that the period of the graph is 2 pi. So that means that traveling on this graph, 2 pi radians, you will start to do the same thing over again, regardless of where you start on the graph. Okay, let's talk about the domain of this graph. What kind of x values do we find? They go forever to the right, forever to the left. We can put little arrows here, right, at the ends because it's going to continue. So if my graph goes forever to the left, forever to the right, what's the domain? All real, All real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's talk about the range of this graph. What kind of y values do I find? 1 to negative 1. I don't have anything below negative 1. I don't have anything above positive 1. So how would I say that? Let's use interval notation. And with interval notation, we list the lowest first, comma, the highest. Negative 1 to 1. And I'm going to use square brackets because I do have values of negative 1 and 1 on the graph. Like it doesn't go up to it, but with an open circle, like it includes it. Ooh, I'm going to throw another word out there. This graph oscillates. What does that mean? oscillate. Okay, maybe your grandparents had an oscillating fan. It goes back and forth. Yeah, so like those fans that oscillate, they just keep going back and forth. You've seen them, right? I had a car one time. One of my first cars I had was a Mazda, and the vents in the car oscillated. Isn't that brilliant? That's so brilliant. Like, because then it just dispersed the cold air or warm air, whatever, evenly throughout the car. It was so awesome. It was genius. And I haven't seen a car that does that since. Um, but this oscillates over and under the x-axis. So it's going back and forth, over, under, over, under. So it's an oscillating periodic graph. How amazing is that? Okay, let's talk about symmetry. Oops, let me slide it back up. Is this graph symmetric? I flipped it which way? Okay, so hot dog style, if I fold it on the y-axis, it doesn't match, does it? What about over the x-axis? No. But what if I reflect it over the x and then the y? 
or over the y and then the x? Yes. yes. So let's take this first little hill. If I reflect it over this way and then that way, then that ends up matching with that. Okay, that is a type of symmetry. It's called um, origin symmetry. Have you ever heard of that? It's kind of a sophisticated type of symmetry because it's not just fold on the X, fold on the Y. It's actually both. So an easier way to see origin symmetry is, the, and this is why it's called it, put your finger on the origin and rotate your paper 180 degrees. What do you notice? Same thing. It looks identical. That is origin symmetry. So I can rotate it about the origin 180 degrees. See? The same. Okay. So another graph, here's a really simple graph that has origin symmetry, is y equals x. The graph that goes straight through the middle of those two quadrants. If I rotate it, looks the same. Another simple graph that has origin symmetry is x cubed. That graph looks like that. And if I rotate it 180, it looks the same. Okay, so you actually have experienced or used a lot of graphs that do have origin symmetry. You just may not have used that, that term before. Okay, so it does have symmetric. If a graph has origin symmetry, it is also an even function. Have you heard that expression in Algebra 2? Okay. An even function means that f of negative x is the opposite of f of x, or the negative of it. Okay, so what does that mean? that f of negative 30 degrees would be the negative or opposite of f of 30. Okay. What does that mean? All right, let's go to our graph. Uh-huh, okay. Well, I was hoping I could get both that and the graph on there at the same time, but I can't. Okay, so f of negative 30, that means on this graph, when x is negative 30 degrees, what is y? If I go to negative 30, the y coordinate is negative 1 half. Okay, what is f of 30? That means when x is 30, what is y? If I go to 30 degrees, the y coordinate is 1 half, and that is the negative of 1 half. Okay, so this graphically, this is what it means. It might make more sense this way. Y'all listen. If I go to positive 30 and negative 30, I will have the same answer, but one is positive and one is negative. Opposites. Okay, read it, th read it this way, ladies. F of this is the opposite of F of this. If you think of the negative. So what's the, what's the equal to the negative and the part because that's going to multiply? And that's the exact same answer. That's the point. <laughs> opposite meaning one was positive and one was negative. Right? Okay, so listen to this. The function evaluated at negative 30 is the opposite of the function evaluated at 30. Hello? Okay, thank you. Carson, you're shaking out. How much longer does the, how much longer does that? Because I can tell. 20 minutes. All right, I'll wait. Okay. Just go when you need to then. Okay, so what this means graphically is if whatever amount I go to the right and to the left, those answers will be opposites of each other. 90 is 1. Negative 90 is negative 1. 
So where one is positive, the opposite direction I get negative. Okay, that's what an odd fun function means. I mean, origin symmetry and even function. <gasps> Y'all, I used the word even. That is wrong. It's odd. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Change that word to odd. Woo. Yes, that's what's opposite. I guess that's why it's called odd. So sorry, odd. Odd, not as in strange, although this is kind of a strange graph. Yes. Ready? I'm a terrible throw. Okay. All right, let's talk about our max values. My bad, y'all. What is the highest value on this graph? One. I have max values of one that occur where? Multiple times, I agree. It happens at 90 or pi over 2. It also happens at 5 pi over 2. It also happens at negative 3 pi over 2. How far is it between those? 360 or 2 pi. That goes back to the periodic nature of the graph, right? So every 360 degrees or every 2 pi radians, I'm back at a max. So this is how we're going to write that. I'm going to pick one of them. I'm going to say pi over 2. They occur at pi over 2, but I can go right and left 2 pi any number of times. Okay, so pi over 2 plus or minus 2 pi k means start at pi over 2, go left or right 2 pi once, twice, three times, four times, five times, etc. So k is just like a counting number. Hmm? Yes, that's a way that we say that it goes on forever in both directions because of the plus or minus. So starting at pi over 2, I can go right 2 pi, and I'm at, back at another max. I could go right another 2 pi, and I'd be back at another one, and I could do that forever. Or I could go left 2 pi, back at a max. Okay, so this is a way of saying that there's an infinite number. If I start at pi over 2 and go out either direction 2 pi, it just keeps going. Okay, let's talk about the minimum. Min value of what? It's the lowest y value. Negative 1. Those occur at... Okay, they keep occurring also, don't they? But let's just pick one. Where's a low point? Negative pi over 2. We could use 3 pi over 2. Doesn't matter. I'll use negative pi over 2 because that was offered first. But I can go right or left. How much? 2 pi or 360 degrees any number of times. Once, twice, three times, four times, etc. Questions? All right. Turn the page over. Guess what we're going to graph next? Cosine. But it's going to go much faster. We're not doing tangent today. Just these two. <clears throat> you want to just pick up the rest later? Okay. Okay, so we're not going to make a table of values, though. Because what do you know about these X and Y values on here? They're the same, like they're they're matched with different angles, but you see the same numbers over and over. You see one, negative one, zero, one half square root of three over two. So it's the same concept. So I don't really think we need to make a new table, but if I'm looking for the cosine values, what am I looking at in the ordered pair? The x's. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're just going to plot as we go around the unit circle. I'm going to start at 0, and the cosine is 1. So I'm going to plot 0, 
one. Make sure you go up to that second line for one. Okay, we're still skipping the 45s. They're still not marked on here, so the next one is 30. So I go to 30 degrees. Cosine is square root of 3 over 2. Oh, I know that decimal. 0.9. So 30 goes to 0.9. Okay, moving on, increments of 30, I get to 60. And that x coordinate that represents the cosine is 1 half. So 0.5. <clears throat> pi over 2, cosine is 0. So pi over 2, 0. Keep going. Oh, this cosine is negative 1 half. Next one is negative square root of 3 over 2. That's our negative 0.9. Person let a fly in when he left. It has 180. The cosine is negative 1. There it goes in front of the board. Oh, that doesn't look the same, does it? Let's keep going. 210, negative 0.9. Two forty, negative one half. Three pi over two, zero. Three hundred, one half. Ah, do you see what's going on now? Next one, square root of three over two, so that's our point nine. And 2 pi gets us back to 1. Hmm. What if I kept going around the circle? It would just keep repeating, wouldn't it? All right, so I want you to take that pattern. Is it going to look the same? Yeah, if I keep repeating that over and over, I will have waves again. So I want you to take that pattern and repeat it as if I'm just going around the unit circle again. So repeat it all the way out to the edges. Both directions. Once you get your points plotted, then connect it with a nice smooth curve. All right, do we have a nice pretty curve again? What do you think we're going to call this? You think that it's also called the sine of 40. Doesn't it look the same? How does it compare? It's like it's shifted over a little bit, exactly. But it's still the same kind of curve, just like an up parabola and a down parabola are both called parabolas. This is still called a sinusoid. <laughs> all right, so next let's go through the domain and range and all that good stuff. 
Is this also periodic? Yeah, it keeps repeating. Does it also oscillate? Of course, above and below the x-axis. Um, how far would I have to travel on this curve before it started to repeat? 360 or 2 pi. So we say the period is 2 pi again. Okay, tell me about the domain. Mm -mm. It's, I mean, this is representing my x-coordinate and the x-axis, but the y-value is what the cosine is equal to. Okay, tell me about the domain on this graph. Yeah, continues infinitely in both directions, so it's all reals or negative infinity to positive. Tell me about the range. Yeah, it's the same, isn't it? Brackets. From negative 1 to 1. Okay, does this one have any symmetry? This one's easier to see, isn't it? Yeah, if I fold it on the y-axis, I've got a match on both sides. So this has nothing fancy, just y-axis symmetry. Okay, now... On the previous graph, it had origin symmetry, and it was an odd function, once I corrected myself. If it has y-axis symmetry, we call it an even function. So an even function goes with y-axis symmetry, odd function goes with origin symmetry. One implies the other. Um, an even function means that f of x is identical to f of negative x. In other words, f of 30 would be the same as f of negative 30. I'm just using 30 as something that's easy to see on the graph. Mm -hmm. I could use pi over 2 or any, any angle measure. Okay, so if I go to 30 degrees, what's the y coordinate? Do you remember what that's representing? That point 0.9. But if I go to negative 30, what's the y coordinate? Same. So if I go left and right the same amount, let's say I went left pi, right pi, I have the same y coordinate for any angle that I choose. That's what an even function means. So this was point 0.9 and this was also point 0.9, so they are equal. Whereas the other graph, they were opposites of each other. They were the same number, but one was positive, one was negative. Okay, mix, uh, not mixed values, max values of what? One, all right, hit that high of one. And they occur at x equals what? <clears throat> well, they keep recurring, don't they? Pick one, though. Zero. And how far do I go before they occur again? 2 pi. So I'm going to say they start at 0, but I can go left or right 2 pi any number of times. That's what that k represents, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And then we have min values of what? Negative 1. And they occur at x equals what? Well, they occur repeatedly, but pick one. Pi, okay. I could also use negative pi. And I go left or right, two pi, any number of times, and I'm right back at another minimum. Mm -hmm. Y-axis symmetry just means that you can literally fold it on the y-axis and it matches up on both sides. Uh-oh, maybe. I'll come look at it. Okay, let me turn this recorder off here.